Hi, how are you today? I'm Karen Bowers, and my topic for today is about UVA and UVB protection. So I've been in the skincare industry since 1975, and I have a lot of experience and a lot of education, and this is one of my favorite topics. So UVA and UVB rays do have radiation, and that radiation can penetrate through our clothes, while we're driving, through the clouds, and even while we're in our house, if we're reading a book near the window, the radiation can get to us there. And I want you to think about radiation, it, the depth that it can penetrate. So for instance, when we go in for an x-ray, they usually put a lead plate on us to protect us from getting cancer. And that's exactly what the sun can do, unfortunately. And it can also wrinkle us as well. So if that's a concern of yours, I know it's not a concern for everybody, but if it is a concern of yours, it's something to think about too. So the type of sunscreens, there's been many sunscreens and there's many on the market, but I'm going to talk about the chemical sunscreens first. And one of the first ones that was invented many years ago, formulated, was abibenzone and oxybenzone. And when it first came out, they were hoping that it was going to be a miracle and prevent UVA radiation by absorbing it and our body would somehow eliminate it. But after 10 years, they discovered that the rates of melanoma went up, not down. And some children were ending up in Hawaii and on holidays with sunstroke, and yet they didn't show any burns at the surface. So this brought on some research and at Taft Research Center in England, they tested all the sunblocks. And what they discovered in three hours was that people that were using ibibenzone and oxybenzone were actually had more inflammation deep in their skin than people who didn't have any sunblock on whatsoever. So there was absorbing it and causing problems down around the stem cell. And it's still available and not, there isn't a warning sign on it in North America. There is in Europe, there is a warning sign, especially not to have children use it. So I don't even understand why it's on the market because I think it can be quite dangerous. Now there's another chemical sunscreen. It's been around for more than 20 years and there hasn't been a known side effect and that is called oxinitate or oxalitate. It can be extremely good in really hot temperatures when you're perspiring or not or if you have oily skin or um, whether you're swimming in the water. The one downside of it is, is that it can leave a film on your skin and that can interfere with your barrier, you can clog your pores, you might not make collagen as well. So I would suggest, make a suggestion to wash it off when you're indoors. And there is something new, it's been around for a while. Since that problem of discovering that this avibenzone wasn't as promising as they hoped it would, many doctors went back to research. And a team of doctors at Duke University discovered that a plant extract that is in all plants when they're growing and in high amount in tomatoes and rice is called furic acid. And when it is combined with other antioxidants, it actually helps to augment and help the antioxidants last longer on our skin. So furic acid, if you just did a Google search on it, a Google Scholar search on it, you'd find it everywhere. It is global. There's peer review on it everywhere. And in Japan, it's considered a sunblock on its own and some other countries in Europe too. What is so wonderful, wonderful about your furic acid is when it sits on your skin, it can stay and becomes a part of your skin for up to 24 hours and it doesn't wash off. Now I have heard from some of my clients when they're swimming in the ocean for a long period of time, people that are, you know, surfing and whatnot, they still get irritated or red. And that could be a combination of being in the ocean, the salt water and that can make us like can make us feel a bit more irritated. As we all know in salt water, even our lips can get a bit irritated. So we're probably they're probably getting a different type of inflammation with that. So I did want to make that a warning. I would combine Furivic with the oxalitate at that at that point. Now there's a lot of um, sunblock and makeups as well, which is really good. But one of the ingredients I want you to take concern of is there are some products that can actually make you more photosensitive in the sun. So for instance, products that contain petroleum, that can really aggravate your skin and make you more photosensitive. So you wanna look for that in the labels. And also vitamin C. Now, some vitamin Cs 
uh, can be very irritating to the skin. So vitamin C has two molecules in it, L-ascorbic and D-ascorbic. When we eat vitamin C, our body's digestive system takes what it needs, which is the antioxidant L-ascorbic acid, and can eliminate the D-ascorbic, but our skin can't. So if you are using just pure, plain vitamin C on your skin, it can actually make you photosensitive, and I've seen this. So you want to find out from the manufacturer or the person that you're purchasing it from that it is derived from L-ascorbic acid. There can be many forms of vitamin C, but the origin of it should be from the antioxidant part, not the whole part, not the stable part. And um, so then I want to talk about hats. So a lot of people feel that if they put a hat on their head, they're good. But actually, most hats only prevent about 10% of the radiation and of the sun. So there are hats that have labels on it that actually say they are registered as UV protection and they'll tell you the amount that it's protecting for and usually the good ones are protecting 99% of the UVB rays and those are the ones that burn us. They're seasonal, right? We get more of it in the summer, more of it around the equator and then they can, they can block out about 50% of UVA rays. So there I am again telling you about how important it is to block out or to defend against the UVA rays. So fear of acid is fabulous for that. Another thing is the areas where we don't have a lot of fat, for instance our chest and our neck, our nose, our ears, the top of our head, our forehead. Those are areas that we need to be paid attention to because those are the areas that tend to get cancer first. Okay. So I hope I've given you some more information today to help you go into the spring and summer and we're walking outdoors more because we don't have anything else to do. <laughs> it's one of our favorite pastimes, right? So that's enough for today. I'll get back to you with more information, a lot more topics to get into. Have a great day and stay safe. Talk to you later. Bye.